How are you guys doing? Today is Wednesday, December 8th, 2021. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to review the elite matchups and performances from yesterday, Tuesday, December 7th, 2021. Taking a step back and looking at where we are in the calendar year, with baseball being over, uh, the football seasons are coming to a close as all there's left for college football are bowl games. Uh, the NFL has about five weeks left in its calendar right before it gets to the playoffs. As it comes to basketball, both the college and the professional basketball seasons are just getting underway. Um, and looking at what's going on overseas as we are entering, as we are inching towards the end of the calendar year, we are seeing that we are hitting the halfway point for a lot of international soccer as we are entering the last couple of days of, or as today is the last day of a 2021 group stage play for Champions League before we get into the knockout stages. But first, with that said, I'm going to jump into what's going on with collegiate basketball, starting with the sixth ranked team in the nation. The Villanova Wildcats faced off against the unranked Syracuse Orange at the Jimmy V Classic. Villanova would end up beating Syracuse 67 to 53 after they outscored Syracuse by 17 in the second half. Um, with this win, they were led in scoring by their starting guard, Justin Moore. Their junior out of Maryland will go on to finish with 18 points and six rebounds in 36 minutes. He shot seven for 17 from the field and he shot four for 12 from three on the night. With this win, the sixth ranked Villanova Wildcats are seven and two. And with this loss, the unranked Syracuse Orange are five and four. Looking at the eighth ranked team in the nation, the Kansas Jayhawks faced off against the UTEP Miners and Kansas ended up beating UT El Paso 78 to 52. They outscored El Paso by 21 in the first half and by five in the second. The eighth ranked Jayhawks were led in scoring by their starting guard, Ochai Ogbaji. Their starting senior out of Kansas City will go on to finish with 23 points and five rebounds in 31 minutes. He shot nine for 12 from the field, two for three three from three and three for four from the foul line. Their starting guard out of Kansas, Christian Braun, would go on to finish with 20 points and six rebounds in 28 minutes. He shot nine for 13 from the field, and he would go on to make one of his two free throws on the night. With this win, the eighth-ranked Kansas Jayhawks are seven and one, and with this loss, unranked UT El Paso is four and four. Looking at the 10th-ranked team in the nation, the Kentucky Wildcats hosted the unranked Southern Jaguars. Kentucky would beat Southern 76 to 74, winning it by 12 after they outscored Southern by eight in the second half. The 10th ranked Wildcats were led in scoring by their starting guard, their starting forward, I mean, Oscar Shiboye. Shiboye would finish with 23 points, 11 rebounds, two steals, and four blocks in 25 minutes. He shot nine for 11 from the field and five for seven from the foul line. With this win, the 10th ranked Kentucky Wildcats are seven and one. And with this loss, unranked Southern is three and six. Looking at the 12th ranked team in the nation, the Arkansas Wildcats hosted unranked Charlotte. They were able to beat the 49ers 86 to 66. Arkansas outscored Charlotte by 10 points in both halves. The 12th ranked Razorbacks were led in scoring by their starting guard, JD Note, out of Covington, Georgia. Note would finish with 23 points, 10 rebounds, and four steals in 36 minutes. He finished, or he finished shooting nine for 18 from the field and four for five from the foul line. With this win, the 12th ranked Razorbacks are 9 0 on the season, and with this loss, Loss unranked Charlotte is four and four. Looking at the 13th ranked team in the nation, the Tennessee Volunteers faced off against the unranked Texas Tech Red Raiders at the Jimmy V Classic. Texas Tech would end up winning this battle of the six and one matchups, winning this one 57 to 52, outscoring Tennessee 13 to eight in overtime. On the losing end of this matchup, the 13th ranked Tennessee Volunteers were led in scoring by their starting guard, John Fulkerson. Their senior out of Tennessee would finish with 10 points, 10 rebounds, and five blocks in 36 minutes. He shot four for nine from the field and two for four from the foul line. On the winning end of this matchup, the unranked Red Raiders were led in scoring by Terrence Shannon Jr. Their junior out of Chicago would go on to finish with 18 points and 12 rebounds in 42 minutes. He shot six for 14 from the field and six for seven from the foul line. With this win, the unranked Texas Tech Red Raiders are seven and one. 
with this loss, the 13th ranked Tennessee Volunteers are 6-2. and two. Last but not least, taking a look at what's going on with the undefeated 16th ranked USC Trojans. They hosted the unranked Eastern Kentucky Colonels. USC would beat Eastern Kentucky 80-68, outscoring Eastern Kentucky by 16 in the first half to win the game by 12. The 16th ranked Trojans were led in scoring by their starting forward, Isaiah Mobley, brother of and of former for lottery pick Evan Mobley. Isaiah Mobley finished with 23 points, 13 rebounds, and 5 assists in 34 minutes. He shot 8 for 10 from the field, 5 for 6 from 3, and a perfect 2 for 2 from the foul line. With this win, the 16th ranked USC Trojans are 9-0. With this loss, the unranked Eastern Kentucky Colonels are 5-5. Five and five. That is what college basketball is looking like following yesterday's matchups. Taking a look at what's going on in the NBA because there were no Tuesday NFL matchups. Starting off in Dallas, the Dallas Mavericks hosted the Brooklyn Nets. The Nets would end up beating the Mavericks 102-99. They won this game by three after they outscored the Mavericks by 14 in the fourth quarter uh, to win this matchup after they were trailing by 11 going into the fourth. On the losing end of this matchup, the Dallas Mavericks were led in scoring by their elite Slovenian starting point guard, Luka Doncic. Doncic finished with 28 points, six rebounds, and five assists, all in 37 minutes as he shot nine for 21 from the field, three for 11 from three, and seven for eight from the foul line. On the winning end of this matchup, the Brooklyn Nets were led in scoring by their goaded starting power forward, Kevin Durant. Durant finished with 24 points, seven rebounds, and three assists in 41 minutes. He shot 10 for 22 from the field, one for four from three, and a perfect three for three from the foul line. Their elite starting shooting guard, James Harden, out of Arizona State, would finish with 23 points, nine rebounds, 12 assists, and five turnovers in 42 minutes. He shot seven for 13 from the field, three for six from three, and six for seven from the foul line. With this win, the Brooklyn Nets are now 17 and seven. With this loss, the Dallas Mavericks are now 11 and 12. Taking a look now at what's going on in San Antonio, the Spurs hosted the New York Knicks. The Knicks would end up beating the Spurs 121 to 109. Um, the Knicks outscored the San Antonio Spurs by 14 in the middle two quarters. And on the losing end of this matchup, the San Antonio Spurs were led in scoring by their starting point guard, uh, Devin, or their starting point guard Derek White. Derek White will go on to finish with 26 points um, and six rebounds as well as seven assists in 34 minutes. He shot nine for 18 from the field, three for six from three, and he shot a perfect five for five from the foul line. And on the winning end of this matchup, the New York Knicks were led in scoring by their starting shooting guard out of Duke, RJ Barrett. Barrett finished with 32 points, five rebounds, and two steals in 35 minutes. He shot 11 for 20 from the field, seven for eight from three, and three for four from the foul line. With this win, the New York Knicks are 12 and 12. With with this loss, the San Antonio Spurs are 8-15. and 15. Now taking a look at what went down in Los Angeles in Staples Center. The Los Angeles Lakers hosted the Boston Celtics. The Lakers would end up beating the Boston Celtics 117-102 to after the Lakers outscored the Celtics by... 18 points in the middle two quarters um, on the losing end of this matchup the Boston Celtics were led in scoring by their elite starting small forward out of Duke Jason Tatum Tatum finished with 34 points eight rebounds and three assists as well as five turnovers in 34 minutes he shot 13 for 12 from the field five for seven from three and three for five from the foul line on the winning end of this matchup the Los Angeles Lakers were led in scoring by their goaded starting small forward out of St. Vincent St. Mary High School LeBron James finished with 30 points, four rebounds, and five assists in 36 minutes. He shot 13 for 19 from the field, two for five from three, and a perfect two for two from the foul line. Their elite starting point guard, Russell Westbrook, finished with 24 points, three rebounds, and 11 assists in 36 minutes. He shot nine for 16 from the field, one for four from three, and five for six from the foul line. Their elite starting power forward, Anthony Davis, finished with 17 points, 16 rebounds, three assists, two steals, and two blocks in 35 minutes. Davis shot 7 for 13 from the field and 3 for 4 from the foul line. With this win, the Los Angeles Lakers are 13 and 12. And with this loss, the Boston Celtics as well are also 13 and 12.
taking a look at what's going on overseas at what's going on with the last uh, matchups of Champions League, starting off with what's going on in Group A, starting with the reigning uh, Premier League champs, Man City faced off against RB Leipzig and Leipzig, and RB Leipzig would pull away with the two to one win. Uh, as both of the their first goal would come from Dominic Zabuzlai, and their second goal would come from Silva. Manchester City's lone goal would come from Riyad Mahrez in the 76th minute before Kyle Walker picked up a red card. Um, following this loss, or I guess. Following this loss, Manchester City is still sitting on top of Group A. Looking at the other matchup, Paris Saint-Germain hosted Club Bruges from Belgium, and PSG was able to pull off a 4-1 to win as their first two goals will come from their elite French forward um, Kylian Mbappe, and then their next two goals would come from their goaded Argentinian uh, forward Lionel Messi. Uh, with these... With this win, Man City will be the top team out of Group A going into the group draw, and PSG is going to be the second team out of Group A as they finished with 11 points in the table. Taking a look now at what's going on with the Group B matchup, starting off with the reigning La Liga champions, Atletico Madrid. They went to FC Porto to face off against Porto, and Atletico Madrid was able to be Porto 3-1, to their first goal coming from their elite French forward Antoine Griezmann. Um, Porto's lone goal coming after Atletico already scored their three. Um, and looking at the other matchup in Group B, Liverpool would go on to AC Milan and face off uh, of against the Serie A runners up, the reigning runners up, and Liverpool would pull away with a two to one win. Milan scored the first goal of the game. Uh, Liverpool would tie it up in the 36th minute with a with a goal from their elite Egyptian forward Mo Salah, and and Divock Origi's 55th minute goal would be what Liverpool needed in order to get the three points to win. They would go on to win Group B with a perfect record as they won all six of their matchups. Second place in Group B will now go to Atletico Madrid following their 3-1 to win against Porto, which was actually very big as Porto would finish third in the table as Porto will be the team that gets relegated, relegated to Europa League. Um, they will be sitting alongside RB Leipzig from Group A. And AC Milan, after finishing second in Serie A last year, will be eliminated from Champions League and Europa League contention. Looking at what went down in Group C, starting with the reigning Portuguese champs, Sporting CP fell short 4-2 to two to Ajax Amsterdam. Ajax's first goal will come from their striker Sebastian Haller, who scored in every Every single goal who scored in every single game in Champions League this year. Of course, um, congrats to him. And following their four to two win, Ajax sits now number they now sit number one in the table, and Sporting now sits number two as they will be both the teams that make it through. As the other two teams, Dortmund and Besiktas, faced off, and it would end up being a five to one win for Dortmund as Royce would score two goals and they would get two goals from their elite Norwegian striker Erling Holland. Too bad their goal differential would not come close to what Sporting's was as athlete, as Ajax did not beat Sporting bad enough. So as a result, Ajax, will, Ajax and Sporting will be the teams drawn out of the hat as Dortmund will be the team that will be relegated to Europa League and Besiktas will be the team that sits out of Group C. Last but not least, taking a look at what's looking going on in Group D and Champions League, starting off with the reigning Serie A champs, Inter Milan went to Madrid and faced off against Real Madrid. Real Madrid would pull away with a 2-1 to win at home as Tony Kroos would score in the 17th minute, their elite German midfielder, and Marco Asensio would score in the 79th minute after Inter picked up their red card. And then following this win, Real Madrid now sits atop. They finished atop Group D as Inter will finish with the second seed. These will be the two teams that will be selected out of this group. Looking at the last stage in Group D, Shakhtar Donetsk face off against Sheriff Tiraspol. And this game ended up a one-to-one draw after Nikolov's goal ended up uh, ensuring that both teams have finished finish with the point. Uh, and following this, Sheriff Tiraspol with seven points in the table will be the team that will be uh, competing in the Europa League as Shakhtar Donetsk will be relegated or they will not be competing um, in any competition following this after finishing final in the table. And that is the penultimate day of Champions League group stage as of course today we will see group E's F, G, and H. And once all of these matchups from yesterday are from today, I'm sorry, are complete, I will come back tomorrow 
on Thursday, December 9th for another episode of The Elite. And until then, I want to thank everyone for listening. Thanks for listening. Um, and I'll catch you with another piece tomorrow. Um, and thanks for following the world of sports with me every single day. And like I said, I'll catch you with another piece tomorrow. Peace out. I'll see you then.